the slaves absolutely massive, isn't it? Have you, have you filmed commemorations before? Yeah, this is my first time filming them. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, I thought it was going to happen. <laughs> well, that's just wildlife, you never do. And have you been here before? Not here. This right. is my first time here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what are you expecting to happen then? What are you hoping? I hope that they fly right over our heads, mm -hmm. right into the field there, and then they murmurate for a while, a good, like, well, five minutes would be nice, so we can really build up the sequence. Yeah, you, you can sense the light dropping. Something's going to kick off at any minute, and you've got to be ready. Yeah, so we better fun. stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> no. How about talking sets up at the same time? Up. In order to cover all camera angles, Matt always, always had to stop and do something. Keep things moving. The starlings gathering overhead. Hi, Sammy. It's Matt here with Katie and Yas. Are you reading over? A little bit. Yep, I can hear you. Over. Cool. Well, we're all set. Uh, how are things looking at your end? We're looking really good. I think we're all set up as well. We can see some starlings starting to collect together. So hopefully, in the next few minutes, we'll start to see some real movement. Over. Brilliant. Give us a shout. Keep in touch. This will be my first murmuration, so I'm relying on Kirsty from the RSPB to give us early warning of liftoff. So what do you think? How's it looking tonight? It's looking pretty positive. The weather conditions are in our favour. It's a nice bright evening, so they might be a little later than normal. We've had them murmurating here for a few years now at Newport. Um, so it's a, it's a winter spectacle for us, so we get really excited. Sort of early November, they'll start coming in, drips and drabs, and then they build up towards the end of November and December. And we're lucky that they're still here in January this year. So why is it that they come here? So starlings typically like to roost in their in reed beds. So they'll start just before sunset, or come on in, and then they'll roost actually on the reeds of an evening then, all night long, and then they'll leave early morning. How many do you expect to come in? It can vary every year, so um, it builds, so it starts sort of roughly around maybe 10 to 20,000 early on, and then it can build all the way up to sort of 80 to 100. So why is it that they do it? There's a theory that sort of safety in numbers. So like we see in shoals of fish, you know, you, you rarely see very small groups of them. You often see big, large numbers, and essentially it's, it's to be less likely to be eaten. <laughs> um, so we'll have predators like marsh harrier, Barrowhawk, things like that, all hmm. coming in. What are you looking at him for? Trying to take you them and try and come in. Absolutely, yeah. yes, and it really is breathtaking. It is once in a lifetime, um, but don't forget, keep yourself covered because you might get food on. That's good luck, right? No, I think so. <laughs> we'll definitely bear that in mind. Well, while I'm here trying to dodge the showers of starling poo, let's find out what the weather has in store for you in your country file forecast. <laughs> Good evening to you. This upcoming week is looking fairly unsettled with spells of wet and windy weather around. It's going to be much milder than what it's been over the past few weeks. But we have to get over Storm Isha, which is likely to cause some damage and disruptions. Much of the UK, as we move through tonight and into tomorrow, severe gales, widespread severe gales and heavy rain, which will also be accompanied by snow melt across Scotland because the temperatures are so much more mild than what we've seen. This area of low pressure though is deepening as it's approaching. The centre of it expects to pass the north of Scotland. Widespread amber warning, quite a rare thing to see with inland gusts 50 to 60 miles an hour. Closed Irish Sea coast. The whole country's going to get it tomorrow. Miles an hour. We've already seen gusts of 90 miles an hour over high. I think if you're in bed, you're probably in the best place. <laughs> Either in bed or indoors. Ryan and I got blown over the car park this morning going into the You won't want to you would not want to be in a, a hut or a tent. No. Because the spikes deep no matter how deep they are in the ground, I sure winds that temp that's fast. Mm. That winds that strong will probably tear it right out tear the spikes right out of the ground. And the, the tent would just well, go flying. Is, this is from last night. It was horrific last so now, night. Now it's coming up for Monday for today. What we're supposed to have had for today. It has been quite windy. A chillier fields are come, I think, tomorrow. That's certainly the northern half of the country. We're in single digits again. Lots of showers in the north and the west. Best of the sunshine. 
towards east. Good so this lot coming over. Up into that ridge of high pressure, but Tuesday we've got another area of low pressure moving in. So it starts bright and chilly across northern and eastern areas. As the rain pushes into the cold, you could see a spell of transient snow across the Scottish hills. But it'll be turning wet, windy and very mild on Tuesday. That's why we could see temperatures up to around 15 Celsius across parts of England and Wales. That spell of wet wind weather moved through Tuesday night. But Wednesday we're into another ridge of high pressure. So the weather's flip-flopping for this upcoming week. And no spells of wet windy weather will be as strong as what we're expecting tonight. Wednesday, now those things I showed you, instead of catching up cornflakes, they've got a bit of sugar in, but not as much as the cornflakes have. So... If you want to take something up tonight, take those up, bring the corn plates back. Already have. Have you? Oh, right. Well, first they look all right for me on the way home. <laughs> bit of a relief, so they can get... Worry about getting blown in the wind walking to the bus stop. You're going home Wednesday either, aren't you? you That's what I just said. I thought you said Thursday. No. Nope. Through into Friday could be quite wet as those weather fronts cross the country. No, Wednesday, of course. Mm. It's settling down, particularly across the south. Oh. The latter part of Friday and into the weekend as that area of high pressure builds in. So initially we'll start wet and fairly windy, and then we'll see further showers I think, across the north. Friday in, looks a little bit more normal. Mm. Maybe a bit cooler in the north, double figures again across the south. And as we head into the following weekend, it looks like it's going to stay largely dry for England and Wales, thanks to that high pressure system, a few showers. In the north, but stay tuned for the forecast for all the disruptions on Isha Fleet tonight. Well, I took a video of it out at the front door last night, mm. and the um, something was rattling out there. Mm. Here in Newport, the crowds are gathering in anticipation of tonight's aerial acrobatics, and we've been granted special permission from the wetlands of course you have. to capture the spectacle from a bird's eye view. Do they, they'll drone. They'll just treat it like another predator, just like a marsh harrier or a sparrow. Hopefully it'll give us a really good view. Yeah, fingers crossed, it'll be a, a really spectacular show. Hey, drone going up! <laughs> <laughs> it's a tiny one, isn't it? I guess we're just waiting now, don't we? Yeah. Sammy, we've got an incoming group. Looking good, should be drifting towards you now. Over. Oh wow, yes, I see them coming over now. Over. Should be another 18 or so. Just coming into view nowish. 18 is very specific. Are you counting each bird coming over? Yeah, I'm hoping to get to about 85,000 by the <laughs> by the time it gets dark. Starlings can travel from up to 30 miles away to join in. And as the pylons reach full capacity... Oh, did you see them just drop off the pylon now? Wow. It begins. Oh, my word. <gasps> they can form in all sorts of formations yes, as well. It's amazing. When they're, in, when, they're in, when they're in groups like that, that yeah, big. It's amazing how they all move together, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Well, that's what you call a spectacle. From nature's best. When they start best. moving, it's like clouds yeah. moving, isn't From it? The air. You are, look. It's almost like they're liquid. No, waves. They look, they look like waves. Mm. Wave formation from the sea. Flying over a factory. Mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a swarm that is. And if you're lucky enough to be well, down on magic. Brighton I mean, Beach that time of day, they'll all be wow. roosting under the pier and they all come out and do this oh, wow. over the sea at Brighton. They do sometimes, as well mm. as uh, seagulls, of course. Mm. This is a particular thing that starlings do for Word. some reason. How many do you think are up there now then? Oh my goodness me. Well, one, I couldn't tell. <laughs> it's got to be at least over 200 there. The best one I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
kind of talking about thousands. As dusk falls, the aerial ballet dances over the reed beds. 